Hi, friends. Reverend Sandy here. I wanted to record Paul Hasselbeck's uh, wonderful talk from Sunday for those of you who were not able to hear or via Facebook. So bear with me as I share this screen. I'm, of course, recording this via Zoom. And let's see if this, hopefully this will work. I think it's, I think it's going to. Okay. Reverend Dr. Paul Hasselbeck, I'm delighted to be with you and thank you for inviting me. Where'd he go? <laughs> <laughs> so you get me as commentator for this. <laughs> Greetings. I'm the Reverend Dr. Paul Hasselbeck. I'm delighted to be with you and thank you for inviting me for this presentation. I want you to sit back and relax like a little min minion friend is there. If you have a cell phone, take it out. You might wanna take pictures of my slides. I have an email address, alberthasselbeck at gmail.com. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I have a website, paulhasselbeck.com, and a second website, metaphysicalromp2.com where you can find the podcast I co-create with my friends, the Reverend Doctors Bill and Cher Holton. So let's get romping with user-friendly metaphysics. It is all about you. You know, you hear people say, oh, you think it's all about you. Well, the, the truth is, it is all about you. And Charles Fillmore quoted Jesus when he said, you must know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But how many of us thought what Charles thought when he added the truth about yourself, the truth about myself? Because when we learn the truth about ourselves, we can set ourselves free. So our little friends there, one is saying, I have many unanswered questions. And the other one's saying, I have many unquestioned answers. Seeking answers to questions and questioning answers are both part of the spiritual journey. And unanswered questions are far less dangerous than unquestioned answers. This is because when we get an answer and if we don't go back and review it, that thing is still running in the background and it may no longer be applicable. So this idea that it's all about you or all about me is wrapped up in self-responsibility. The key to personal freedom means taking responsibility for all aspects of our lives that we have control over. If you don't have control over something, how could you be responsible for it? Self-responsibility, you've probably heard it put this way, self-response-ability. And you and I can only control the controllables. And what is the one thing that we have absolute control over? Our own minds, our own consciousnesses. And that is very self-empowering when we realize that. No person, no event, no circumstance, no God has control over your mind. Only you do, and you're responsible for it. And tied in with self-responsibility is self-reliance. And I love this definition. Reliance on one's own powers and resources rather than those of others. Does that stimulate in you like it did in me when I first read it? One's own powers, the 12 powers, and all the other principles that we find in unity. The 12 powers plus at least another 18 principles I discovered in my research 
of all the published books of Myrtle and Charles Fillmore and Emily Cady. And he published those and use the truth you know, Unity's Principles and Premises. This gives us a handbook, a tool on these powers that we are always using. Until we're aware of them, we're unconscious of them. And we can use them skillfully or unskillfully. And I think we're all about becoming more and more skillful, aren't we? So as a review, the 12 powers are understanding, will, order, zeal, release, life, faith, strength, discernment, love, dominion, and imagination. There's a few names there that I use. They're found in the Fillmore's writings, but they're not the ones we commonly know. I use discernment instead of judgment or wisdom. I use dominion in the place of power, and I use release in the replace, to replace elimination, because I think those are clearer terms today. Now, these 12 powers don't use you. You use them. And just a few more that I like, benevolence, generosity, intelligence, and substance. And there's a few more that are growing on me too, but we'll leave that for another day. So the problem that we have is that we live in a culture, we live in a society, we live in a system of religious thoughts and feelings and philosophies that support victim consciousness. When we are in victim consciousness, we allow events, circumstances, people, religious authorities to control us. They don't actually have control, but we think they do. When, when you think about a reporter on the news, when he goes, up to interview somebody who's maybe his house is burning. What does he say? What does he ask? How does that make you feel? As, as if the burning house makes the person feel a certain way. That's not how it works. Now, most people will probably have the same response, but the fire is only a catalyst we get to decide how we respond to it. Why did I pick fire? Many years ago, I had a house fire. And when I got home, I discovered it. I called a fire department, they arrived, and I'm standing on my front yard. And, and a neighbor ups, ups, walks up to me and says, well, what are you gonna do? How do you feel or whatever? And I said, well, I guess I'm gonna redecorate because I wasn't gonna go into victim consciousness. So the solution is self-awareness. And self-awareness is tied to consciousness, isn't it? Because consciousness is fundamentally awareness plus arousal plus motivation. And we want to go around with self-awareness happening at the highest levels. Because self-awareness leads to self-knowledge. Now. You could arrive at self-knowledge, but if you don't act on that knowledge, you're not gonna get anywhere. So self-awareness leads to self-knowledge plus action. Now, sometimes when we become aware of self, something, we go into self-condemnation. We don't wanna go there. That, that's the place where the adverse ego or adverse personality likes to go. It likes to go to, the inner critic and beat ourselves up. But self-knowledge is always something useful and it's something we want to take action on. And that action leads to change. You can change your mind and that's what you have absolute control over. And so it's helpful to talk about levels of consciousness so we can be aware of what level of consciousness we're living from so we already talked about victim consciousness there's our little friend there he's a victim 
So victim consciousness is a consciousness that everything happens to me. And in that consciousness, it's external. There's a separated locus of control. The locus of control is out there and not here. Even so, it's self-centered. It's poor me. It's woe me. It's disempowering and it's powerless. It's powerlessness. And that is not a very happy place to live, is it? Charles Fillmore said, we are constantly making condition through our thoughts and feelings. Some people declare that everything is against them. If they miss a, if they miss a streetcar, they say, it's always that way. And they build up a state of mind in which everything seems contrary to them. How do they build up that state of mind? The law of mind action. Thoughts we hold in mind with feeling produce similar thoughts and feelings of the same kind in my mind. You probably heard it, thoughts hold in mind, held in mind produce after their kind. That's the meme. It's important to know that thoughts and feelings held in my mind produce more thoughts and feelings of the same kind in my mind. The next level, Victor is mine, is Victor consciousness, that I have control, I have mastery. Some things happen by me. I control my experience. You know, friends, that's 100% true. You have 100% control of your experience. You have differing levels of control of the world around you, the world and the events within, within which you, you move. And so you control your experience, so it is all about you. And when it, when it is all about you, now the, there's an internal locus of control instead of the external locus in victim consciousness. It is self-centered, but not necessarily in a negative way. It's self-empowered and it's personal power. So when you're in victim consciousness, as soon as you're self-aware of that, you have a way to shift into another level of consciousness. And victor consciousness is a place we could go. In the revealing word, Charles defined power as man's innate control over his thoughts and feelings. Let's turn that into an affirmation. I have innate control over my thoughts and feelings. Wow. Let's say that again. I have innate control over my own thoughts and feelings. This power of dominion is not mostly focused on having dominion on others. It's dominion over our own consciousness, our own awareness, our own thoughts and feelings. And I love this quote, there is but one power, we use it as we will. If we send it out by our thought and word and hate, it destroys. If we send it out in love, it builds. You see, it's all about you and how you use the power of power or the power of dominion. The next level is vessel consciousness. It's where things happen through me. We have phrases like, the Christ in me is vessel consciousness. Things come through me. I hear a lot of musicians saying, I didn't write that song. God floated through me, where they're not taking any responsibility for their talents and what they've added to it. We say things like, I'm a conduit for God. I'm an instrument for God. I'm a vessel for God. But think about that for a minute. If God is using you, then in a way, in a positive way, you're a victim of God. So vessel consciousness is just a nicer form of victim consciousness. And in vessel consciousness, there is an external and separate locus of control. And that locus of control is bestowed by you on God. It's more selfless, so that makes it better. And God is powerful and has power over me. Well, 
God isn't powerful. God is power. Man uses it, humankind uses it, you use it, I use it to be powerful. Man constitutes the instrument of God through which he brings his potentialities in invisibility. Man is the vessel of God and expresses God. You can find quotes in the historic writings that represent all four levels of consciousness. These are just two examples where Charles is reinforcing vessel consciousness. But there are lots of quotes that support the idea that we're fully divine and fully human. It just depends on where you're putting your awareness, where you're putting the flashlight of your consciousness as you're reading. And finally, sort of the ultimate consciousness is verity consciousness. We Most of us know the quote, verily, verily, I say unto you, where verily means truly. So verity consciousness, we could call capital T truth consciousness, where we realize we're divine. It's me. It's an internal locus of control. It's selfless. It's altruistic. And it's universal power, universal powerfulness. This is one of my favorite quotes from Christian Healing that was published in about 1909. And it's a shame it kind of gets buried. Charles Fillmore said, individualize yourself in the highest degree by, defer by affirming that spirit is in you and that you are all that God is. You are all that God is. This is true of man in his spiritual nature, not in his human nature. You see, we are fully human. We are fully divine. And we are 100% responsible for both. We don't, rep we don't represent or show up in all the full range of our humanity. And we're not fully aware of the scope of our divinity. But that doesn't mean it's not there. It's not a spark of the divine. It's not a wave of the divine. It's not a drop of the divine. It's not a piece of the divine. Eric Butterworth said, God is spirit present in its entirety at every point in space all at the same time. That means the divine is present at every one of your 37.2 trillion cells and more. The divine is fully present and available at the point of your consciousness. And that idea is what we can use to step into a greater expression of our personal power. You see, it is all about you, and it's all about how you use your divinity to express your humanity. And so it is. I'm not sure you got the video on that, but at least you got the audio. And you know what's wonderful, I think, is that Paul, while I may not always agree 100% with what he has to say, always gives me plenty to think about. Namaste, friends. <laughs>